So you're thinking of buying your first house? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Are you all of those emotions all in one? Well, today we're gonna go over the top 10 mistakes I see first time home buyers make so you can avoid them yourself. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Steve. I'm the team lead for the Three Rivers Real Estate Team based out of the Twin Cities right here in Minnesota. Me and my team, we've literally helped hundreds of people buy their first home. And today we're gonna go over the top 10 things that we consistently see people do so you can avoid them if you're thinking of buying a house. All right, now these are gonna be in no particular order, but one thing we consistently see is people wanna start looking at homes, but they're not pre-approved for a mortgage yet. Now, you can get a pretty good estimate of what your monthly payment might be for mortgage calculators, but there's more to it than that to get pre-approved. Too many times people wanna go out, start looking at homes, they find one they love, they finally find it, they wanna put an offer in, but you get that pre-approval first. And there could be just some weird thing out there that's gonna stop you from getting that pre-approval. We see it all the time. Sometimes it's something as silly as something in collections from when you were in college. You didn't shut down a utility property before you moved and it's still sitting out there. Sometimes you don't have enough debt history. We see this one a lot too. People are very financially sound, but they don't have any credit cards. They don't have any car payments, something like that. It's hard to get pre-approved for a mortgage when you don't have any credit history. So get pre-approved first, then you can figure out exactly what you're gonna pay monthly, exactly what type of loan you qualify for, then you have a much better idea of the type of home you're gonna be able to purchase. All right, the next thing is being realistic with your monthly budget. Once you have that pre-approval in hand, just because you're pre-approved for a certain amount doesn't necessarily mean you should pay that. It's you see this all the time that people wanna max out what they're approved for, but you have to remember monthly payments can change. Well, parts of those monthly payments can change. Your interest, your principal, that's all gonna stay the same, but Taxes, insurance, utilities, all that stuff can fluctuate. So if you're pushing the envelope, you know, a year or two down the road, if taxes go up or there's an assessment put on your property, something like that, you got to make sure that you're not house poor as soon as you buy a house. So you want to be very realistic with your budget and your monthly payment and make sure you can maintain that for a long period of time. Now, this is always very individualistic. Every person is different as far as these things go, but just remember, don't buy a house and then become house poor, so you might end up having to sell it sooner than you want to. Now, owning a house is fantastic, but owning a house is also maintenance. A lot of people forget to prepare for maintenance or stay on top of the maintenance of their home. Things do break, hail storms happen, and you might need to get a new roof and have an insurance down payment for that. Your water heater might go out, your furnace might be on the fritz, what, what the dishwasher might go out, washing machines might break, something like that. So in addition to being realistic with your monthly budget, you also need to maintain the house and you need to keep reserves set aside for when things do inevitably break. And a lot of first time home buyers forget about this and there are some expensive parts to a home. Like I said, HVAC, furnace, any of your appliances, they can go out at any time for pretty much any reason. I've seen you know, dishwashers go out within five years. It happens, you get a weird power surge or something. So you need to have a budget, you need to have some reserve funds put away for when things break around the house, as well as you need to maintain the house. You gotta get leaves out of the gutters, you gotta paint sometimes, a lot of things to maintain within there. So if you're thinking about buying a home, just make sure you understand there are a lot of maintenance out there with it too and you gotta be prepared for when things break. All right, next up, you wanna make sure you're researching the neighborhoods that you're going to move into. Don't rely solely on your realtor for this. One, realtors are limited on what they can say as far as neighborhoods go. Two, what your neighbor, what your realtor might consider a good neighborhood might not be what you consider a good neighborhood. You might be looking for different things that your realtor might not be aware of or be out of touch with. So do your own research. I always encourage my clients to go spend time in the neighborhoods they wanna to move to if they're not familiar with them. Go get coffee, go grocery shopping, go walk down the streets. Make sure it feels homely and good for you and it has all the things you're looking for. You also don't wanna waive your home inspection if you can avoid it. I know in some housing markets, it's really crazy out there and you might be wanting to waive your inspection so that you can get your offer accepted. Now, at least here in the state of Minnesota, you can still make your offer not contingent upon an inspection, but you can still get an inspection done. 
If you can't do that where you are, I still highly recommend getting an inspection done after the fact. To know how to A, maintain your home and B, know anything that might be wrong with it. So you can budget for any of your repairs that you need to know about, but it's hard to do that if you don't get an inspection. An inspection is also great just for teaching you about your house. If you're a first time home buyer, you might not know a lot of different things about houses, where to change filters, what sump pumps are, how to maintain things. Home inspections are great ways to do that. So I don't recommend ever not getting a home inspection. I understand sometimes you have to do that to get the offer accepted, but if you have to go that route, still try to get that home inspection done, even if it's after the closing, or if you can make your offer just not contingent upon it, still getting it done. So you can learn about your house, how to properly maintain it and budget for any things that might go wrong. All right, next up, you wanna make sure you're managing your expectations. I know you want to buy your first house and you want it to be perfect, but the fact is no house is perfect. Even if you're building a custom house, there's odds are if you've lived it in a couple years, there's going to be some things that you want to change. I always advise my clients to think of three things, three non-negotiables that your house needs to have. A common one here in Minnesota is a garage. Maybe it's a fenced in backyard. Maybe it's two bathrooms, three bedrooms, whatever it happens to be. Make sure you have that list of just a few things that your house needs to have. And maybe it's a location or school district. Just make sure you have those locked down and it's not too big of a list. If you narrow your site too far, you might never find a house. And like I said, once you've lived in a house for a couple of years, you really don't know exactly what you want until you've been there for a couple of years and your needs are going to change over time. How many people needed a home office because of COVID? Might not have been anything on your radar, but something happened and you needed to change it. Maybe you're having a kid and ends up being twins or triplets, your needs are always gonna change. So make sure you have those three non-negotiables, stick to that list and let that be your guiding principle and don't waste too much time trying to find the perfect house because there's just no such thing as a perfect house. All right, be sure to give yourself a lot of time to buy a new house. I see too many first time home buyers with a lease expiring or something happening where they wanna move into a house quick ASAP. Unfortunately, this is a bit of a slower process. There are a lot of things that need to happen. A, it's gonna find you a couple of weeks probably to find a house you even wanna get bid on. Then you have to get your offer accepted and then escrow usually lasts 30 to 45 days depending where you're at. So when you start the process, it could be a good two, three, four months before you're actually even moved into a home. So if you're up against a lease or something like that, you might not be able to make a good decision. You might feel very, very rushed in your decision. So make sure you're giving yourself adequate time to find your next house. All right, buying a house is a very emotional time, but you have to keep your emotions in check when buying a house. Yes, you want it to feel like home and be a great place for you to be at for a couple of years, but sometimes your emotions can override that logical side of your brain. So yes, it might be a great house and a great location. You get all the warm, fuzzy feelings that you wanna buy it, but the roof is not good. It needs a new furnace, it needs a new AC, and you can't afford those things. Make sure you're listening to that logical side of your brain too, and it's not all just emotionally driven. All right, I see this one all the time, and I call it having too many cooks in the kitchen. Now, what I mean by that is yes, when you're buying a home, you should have as many people on your team as you need. That can include parents, uncles, a realtor, whatever it happens to be, but Make sure your team doesn't get too big and you have too many voices coming at you. It's great to have a parent, but if you have a significant other, maybe they're gonna have their parents and then maybe you have an uncle or an aunt who lives in the area. And before you know it, they're picking out your house and you're not picking it out anymore. And then you end up getting pushed into a house that maybe isn't exactly what you want. Now, like I said, it's great to have your parents and your relatives be part of the home buying process, but just make sure they're not making the decision for you. I've seen it way too many times with first time home buyers where they get pushed into something that isn't exactly what they want, but it's what their family wanted. And then they end up living there for a couple of years and they hate it for all those reasons. So just make sure if you're taking advice from other parties that again, you're just making sure that you're keeping your needs and your wants in the forefront. And now lastly, I wouldn't be a good realtor if I didn't say get a realtor, but in all seriousness, 
Make sure you have someone looking out for your best interests who understands your area and try to just limit it down to one realtor. It's very common when you're a first time home buyer, there's a lot of websites out there to look at homes on and might be clicking, scheduling showings on a lot of different websites and you're getting paired with a lot of different realtors. But if you can get it, niche it down to one person that you know, like, and trust, it's they're gonna be able to look out for your interests so much more. As you start touring homes with someone, they get a feel for what you're looking for, what you're gonna love, what you're gonna hate. I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody ask me for to go look at something, and again, as a realtor, I've got that logical brain kind of going off going, hey guys, I know you really like this one, but did you look at this, this, and that? And they go, no, we didn't see that. You know, we got drawn in by the cool looking kitchen, but yes, we hate that, that, and that. Thank you for letting us know. But I wouldn't know that if I hadn't been working with them for a long time. So it's really great to have one person on your team that you can rely on who knows exactly what you're looking for and can look out for your best interest. All right, they're the top 10 things that I have seen being a realtor for the last seven years that I see first time home buyers mess up. What do you think? If you bought a house before, did any of these relate to you? Did you make any of these mistakes? Is there anything that I missed? If you bought a house and there's something that I missed, let me know in the comments below. Again, if you have questions about the home buying process, specifically here in the Twin Cities, would love to work with you. Call, text, or email, drop a comment below. Until next time, talk later.